Well, in 2008, voters approved a plan to allow private citizens and not politicians to redraw legislative boundaries for California. And now, in 2010, it's time to select the 14 Californians who will influence our political future. The intention was to have a commission that truly represented the diversity of the uh, state, and the problem is that it has not happened. So joining me now is Christopher Punong Bayan. He is the Deputy Director of the Asian Law Caucus, and Nancy Ramirez. She is the Western Regional Counsel for the Mexican American Defense and Educational Fund, also known as MALDEF. Thank you very much for being here. And this is such a very, very important issue that I think so many of us don't know about. And why, why are we kind of in the dark about this, Nancy? Well, it's actually a very new process. This is the first time in California's history that a Citizens Redistricting Commission will be redrawing the state boundary lines. In the past, the state legislature had that responsibility. And in 2008, the voters passed Proposition 11. So that's what we're implementing now. OK, and the application, there's an application process. We're nearing the end of that. And we're asking people to fill out a form and if they're interested to be part of the commission. The problem is that we want a diverse commission. And it doesn't seem that enough ethnic minorities mm -hmm. are applying. Is that true? So the state auditor's office is actually providing up to the minute information about the demographic character of the applicants. And in a state where 60% of the population are people of color, mm -hmm. only 30% of the total uh, applicant pool are people of color. So there is a big disproportionate underrepresentation of uh, communities that we need to see remedied in this last week. The deadline to apply is actually February 12th, so we have a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we encourage people to go to the website to learn a little bit more about the application process, but also to apply. OK, and I know a lot of organizations, including the two that you represent, have been pounding the pavements, letting people know about this. So the educational process has been rather hard work and labor intensive, I would assume. Yes, there's a number of organizations, including the state auditor's office, that have been traveling up and down the state, mm -hmm. um, informing community members. We've had five forums uh, this last two weeks up and down the state to educate people about what redistricting is, first of all, the laws that apply, and also the application process. Um, it's important for the viewers to understand that the application the initial deadline of February 12th is for the first phase of the application. And it's a very easy form to fill out. And it's online. And it only takes five to 10 minutes. Can we go through a couple of the, the, the reasons why or how you might be able to qualify? Mm -hmm. What are the qualifications? So you need to have been a registered voter in the state of California for at least the last five years. And you cannot have changed political parties within that five-year time frame. Okay. You had to have voted in at least two of the last three statewide elections. So this is November. Uh, 04, 06, 08, uh, the gubernatorial and the presidential elections. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of disqualifications as well that people should know about. So one, for instance, uh, you cannot have donated more than $2,000 to a political, to a single political candidate um, over the last 10 years. And there are a number of other disqualifications related to So it's the very, very specific. It is. It, it is. is. And so, so it is a, a very complicated process. But the thing is, you are here to say to especially minorities, go ahead and apply. And why is that important? Well, the, the line drawing, the, the way the political boundaries are formulated, are going to determine the political landscape for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time ever in California's history that real citizens, voters, will be able to determine where those lines are drawn. The authors of Prop 11 had intended to put it in the hands of citizens because they felt that the politicians were drawing districts that were too much based on their own self-interest. Um, so where the lines are drawn are going to impact who represents you. It's going to impact their partisan affiliation. It's going to impact um, the, uh, what their ethnicity or the racial background is. It will determine which neighborhoods and communities will be kept together within a district, or whether they'll be split, mm -hmm. which geographic region. A lot of funding and social services will Absolutely. be affected that way. So you have 14 citizens in a statewide committee. It's a split, seven from Northern California, seven <laughs> from Southern California. How does that balance out? So it'll be uh, 14 members, five of whom are registered Democrats, five of whom are registered Republicans, and four are declined to state or third party. 
But what's important to know is those are the only requirements as far as diversity that Prop 11 set forward. So there are no requirements as to a certain uh, community being represented adequately. And that's the main concern that mm. we have, or that the diversity of California's population and voting community is not adequately represented on the membership of the commission. Who chooses the 14 people? It's a process that's overseen by the state auditor's office, who is selected because the state auditor is seen as independent and nonpartisan. Okay. So they go through the process of thousands of applicants mm -hmm. and kind of, I don't want to make fun of it, but it's almost like, this person? <laughs> well, it, it's a little more than that. Yeah. You know, the, the initial application is really just getting your foot in the door. February 12th, you have to have your foot in the door if okay. you want to be considered further. After that, you will be required to submit some essay answers to some essay questions some letters of recommendation, and then the next stage is interviews, okay. and then, you know, there's a few other stages right, after that. So there's that. a vetting process. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If this is the first time for the commission, and what they do will influence us for the next decade, there's going to be another commission in 10 years. So this is a 10-year commitment? Right. The bulk of the work, though, will actually happen in 2011. So once the commission is constituted by the end of the year, they will start their redistricting process in January and wrap it up by the end of the year. So the obligation to actually serve in the commission is mostly in 2011. And they'll hold hearings throughout the state, they will draw maps, and then they'll hold another set of hearings to get community feedback on what the content of the maps looks like. Okay, so go online, make a phone call, go ahead and do the application, which is a simple, easy process. They have a few days left to do that. Mm -hmm. And so far, we've had, I think we were talking maybe as many as 15 applicants, so uh, 15,000 applicants mm -hmm. so far. But we that need a lot more. That should discourage anybody from applying. Because, yeah, a lot of people will be uh, eliminated just going through all the details. Thank you very much. This is a really interesting process. It's very important to all of us. So if you have any inkling in wanting to participate um, on the commission, we have several sites and several websites for you to check it out, and uh, you have a few days to do this. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, Nancy, for being Thank here you. and giving us the information. And up next on Bay Area People, baseball fans would love to hear stories from the lady in the locker room, even if it is about the Los Angeles Dodgers. We'll have her story right away after this break. <laughs>